So I'm going to introduce our next speaker and panelist, um, Yuki Takamatsu Reese, who is, was born and raised in Japan and came to the United States as an exchange student to study psychology while, becoming, or, while teaching Japanese at a college. Uh, she obtained a master's degree in social work, uh, became a licensed clinical social worker, and has been providing mental health services uh, to mainly children and adolescents for over 25 years. She is currently a director of school-based services with Viewpoint Health and has a team of 40, over 40 licensed therapists assigned to local schools to provide professional counseling. So I'll let Yuki uh, give her presentation and then we'll move on to the panel portion. Is it better? Okay. <laughs> All right, so first I'm going to talk a little bit about what I do so that you know where I'm coming from. So I am a director of school-based services that's, a Ape, that's called Apex School-Based Services, and that's sponsored by Department of Behavioral Health. So it's actually a statewide program. I'm only in charge of Gwinnett, no, Gwinnett Rockville, and Newton County. And this is our ninth year doing that in, in Georgia. And that was really in response to the Sandy Hook shooting that happened. Of, and the president then, President Obama, saying, we need mental health in school. And uh, you know the thing was that the social, school social workers, school counselors, identify the kids who need therapy. They make a referral. But there are many barriers, right? Parents may not have capacity to take kids out of the school every, you know, every week to bring to the therapy. Some family don't feel comfortable. It's so say they say that they we need to do something at school. So my program, I have a team of licensed therapists who are assigned to local schools. And they actually have an office at local schools and they report to school every day. And they, you know, provide the therapy services as the same as the uh, service that they provide in the clinic. Uh, as you can see, this is. Hmm. Yeah, this is the map. So in the state of Georgia, this, this, these are the um, county school district who has the similar services. So if you are interested, go to the um, website of the Department of Behavioral Health and look a uh, search Apex School Based Services and they have a little bit more information. But I work for Viewpoint Health. That's a local community service board. We provide mental health services to the community and mainly who do not have um, privilege of you know private insurance. So we serve the kids with med client with Medicaid, we also serve, um, serve the client who do not have insurance. And I, I was talking to many people and I heard, oh, I didn't know that. So I think it's good for you to know that you can get the mental health services if you go to your community's service board. And then what we do is, like I said, we take the medical model. That means during the assessment, we, we have to um, come up with some kind of psycho psychiatric diagnosis. And we do the assessment. I'm not gonna talk about assessment because you talked about a lot, but I want you, I, I have a list of things and I'm gonna come back to this later because we ask everything. What's going on? What brought you here? But also the history, family history, developmental history, family history of mental health, family history of everything. So I wanna talk about culturally sensitive assessment. Right, because assessment is everything. We want to find out what are we treating. But so I want you to think though, maybe this slide, I, I'm, I can't. I want you to think about when you are going to therapy, I'm not saying you're crazy, you might be, but I'm not saying you are, but say you're going to therapy, right? And you are asked, okay, what is your culturally significant value or culturally significant things? If you want to share, I'm not gonna make any of you share unless you insist, but think about what might come to your mind, right? What is the culturally important thing for you, for me to know you? 
but you need me to know as a therapist. I don't have a million years to you know, hear your life story, so I just want you to kind of come up with something really quick. What's important to you? You got that? Okay, see. Ah, what is it? Okay, I'm going to go just. All right. <laughs> But the culture really is, though, like he said, he did a good job. Shared value, shared belief system, the way you see the world, the way that you, you know, you're raised, what you value. But is it just the race? Is it just that your nationality? No. Some people might have thought about, as a woman, this is important to me. Some people might, might have thought, as a counselor, this is important to me. As a parent, this is important to me, right? So there are many, or as a, you know, uh, to my religious belief system. Yes, I'm a belief system. <laughs> it's important. You know what I mean? So you really need to, and then you represent so many different cultures in a so many different ways, right? Like some, you were saying about drama, right? You pretend like, we don't pretend. We act appropriately, right? Nobody. Are you the same person at home as at work, as at your, with your friends, right? Because why? Because you really try to play the role that's appropriate for the setting, right? I can be a feminist as heck, and I can really, really believe that women are superior than men. I can believe that. You can't stop me from doing that. but. I may not say that at my workplace, right? But I might say to my girls, my daughters, hey, girls are good, you know, don't, you know what I mean? So we really have a different layer of the culture. Another thing is it's important really to know different culture. I really think it's good to know the Asian in general this, but Asian, how many of you are Asian here? We are so different. Indians, Japanese, Taiwanese, Korean, I don't know who else. You, are we same? Heck no, right? And then I met a couple of Japanese people here. Are we same? No, I don't think so. When I came here as an exchange student, one thing I hated, well, I didn't hate, one thing that I really struggled was they asked me, in Japan, how is, as a Japanese, how are, I don't know. I only know about my culture. This is the way I was raised. And my family was not considered to be deviant. But who knows? My parents might have been crazy. I don't know. I can only talk about my experience, right? I can really say, in Japan, though, in general, this is considered to be normal or norm. But don't judge me on that. Right? If somebody comes to me and says, hey, you're a Japanese girl, you must be submissive. No. Well, am I? <laughs> right? So I really think assuming is dangerous, as dangerous as ignorant. I want to tell you one story that since I, I was, wow. Since, <laughs> since I found out that I'm doing this presentation, I've been talking to a lot of my therapists. Hey, do you see Asian kids? Hey, do you see, you know, tell me about your Asian family, right? So this is the story I heard. This morning, actually, I was talking to one of my supervisees. She said, there's this boy, he's in high school. He came here in 2017. His mom is crazy. He didn't use that word, but his mom is crazy. He, she won't let him do any extracurricular activities. She's really, like, big on education. He had bad grade, and the grade was 89 or something. You know what I mean? And <laughs> he's not allowed to talk about family business outside of the therapy. So mom did come to the therapy, but mom instructed him, don't, don't say anything that could shame the family. Right? You think about, you, you try to think about this boy. What comes to your mind? That boy actually was Nigerian. You thought it was Asian, right? So a lot of things you think is unique to Asia could be unique to a different culture. Does it matter though? His struggle is the struggle. He has a parent. He's, 
he's, you know, he's new to the country, but he goes to school, so he's really a cultural, he's adjusted. But mom is bringing the culture of her own country. Is this the same struggle? Any nationality can experience the same kind. So it has nothing to do with him being Nigerian or him being Asian. It just, you just need to know. Everybody has a story, everybody has a background, and all I can do is, hey, I want to know, where is your struggle, right? Some, some of you might have the same mom. I have the same mom, right? I, I, did I struggle? Yes, I did. But the way of my addressing that struggle might be completely different from how you would have, right? But that's important too when I'm doing the assessment. Now, it's good to know really about the culture but I'm not anthropologist. <laughs> like you, you said, I can't know even about Japanese culture now. I've been here for 30 years. So you said you are 1.5. I don't know what I am because I came here as a college student. So I was cooked already when I got here, but I've been here longer than I was living in Japan. So am I American? Am I Japanese? I'm not, what am I? I don't know. So if I'm talking to a Japanese kid who just came here, I, he probably is as foreign, and I, have, I might have a lot more you know, common with the American people because my last 30 years was spent in the United States. All I can do is, okay, let's, let's really figure out who you are, what's the struggle. If the struggle is culturally rooted, it's really important to address that but it might not, right? It might be just a regular generation. Every culture has a generation difference. No kids I see at high school say I have the same value as my parents. You tell me that they might struggle because I want to honor my culture, cultural background, my struggle as my, you know, my people, but at the same time, I mean, right? So. That's what I wanted to bring with this wonderful presentation slide that I couldn't show. <laughs> but that's my, what I wanted to kind of talk about today. That very, let's not assume, let's ask, and then we can start. That's all I wanted to say, but I wanted to start 10 minutes, so I had to. Please have a seat there, Yuki. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Dr. Lim and Yuki. So we have about 10 minutes left, and we'll just have a couple questions I'd like to have our panel consider. So you've, you've covered so much, in both of you together, in terms of the conceptualization, tips, the nuances, that culture humility and learning culture is an ongoing process. And there's this whole spectrum of acculturation that just because you come from a Japanese background, it doesn't mean you're 50% Japanese, 50% American. And uh, Imori here would have a different metrics. If, if we were to have like sleep, sleep number, and, and we have a culture number, and everybody has a different number. And, and yet we're in a collective culture more than the typical American, white American. Um, so there's an interesting individual and collective culture. So for a therapist, and we have a mix of Asians and non-Asians, how do you start that engagement to do that dynamic sizing? You asked the question. I think it starts with assessment, right? Like. I like um, Yuki's question, tell me about yourself, what's the most important thing to you, because that's how they center themselves. But I think it starts with the, with the assessment, and you just have them tell their story. And depending on what comes out, you can ask follow-up questions, and then what you really want to know is get to know them as a person, how they think, how they see themselves with the people around them, and what they think is going well and what's not going well. And I think also we are not black and white. Some people hate not being black and white. 
but I might say one thing today. Tomorrow, if you see me, I might say completely different things. Then am I lying? No. Both are authentic to me, right? Depending on what you're talking about, who you're talking to, how am I feeling? It's just really. So I just want to say again, assuming is not the way to go. Asking is the way to go. Thank you. Um, this makes, I mean, psychology is hard, already hard enough in the in general population. And then you add this cultural diversity, culturally sensitive layer to it. It, it just becomes so hard. And we don't, enough, we don't have enough time in the day to surround us, surround ourselves with diverse people. So on a program ma programmatic level, and I know both of you have some level of training, what do you do to prepare a mental health professional to be more culturally sensitive? I think it's coming out of the respect. I respect my client as a person, right? And no matter what's happening, when I'm with you as a client, you're not, but as a client, I devote 100% of my attention to you and the culture is only part of it. So as a training director for a psychology internship, I have a lot of way that I can control my intern's education. So we have didactics and I wanna make sure that our didactic for the whole year has a lot of different um, talks from different people from different backgrounds and different cultures. Um, and our supervisors also need to be able to address that in, in supervision session. We're in fact um, required by the American Psychological Association that through training we need to address cultural diversity. Um, and I'm always the person who asks um, Whenever there's a meeting, whenever there is a grand rounds in our department, I'm always gonna be the one asking what cultural factors affect what you're saying. Um, so I, I typically have the same question um, because I think it's important for people to start answering that at every talk in every type of lecture that they have because you can't really escape the culture question because we are embedded in a culture. Yes, and uh, I'm coming from California where it's very diverse. It's a minority majority. And then coming back here to Georgia, I can instantly feel that it's still the South and white dominant. So as you interact with agencies outside of your own, what gaps and opportunities do you see that can help them become more culturally sensitive. It's a big question, because within your org, you have your control, but outside of your org, what kind of things could you do to advocate or collaborate or share? I think the fact that Georgia has one of the biggest Asian caucuses politically is a good step, right? It's just visibility is what we need. Mm -hmm. And the more people see Asians and Asians everywhere, including in politics or in the media, is a good step because it, it gives people that sense that we are around and we're here and we're part of their community. Um, we're still minority here. I think we're 5% of the state of Georgia. Um, but in different parts of Atlanta, you know, we have a pretty sizable um, Asian American community. Ellen, Ellen, how are we doing on time? Okay, so I'll take one question from the audience because I wanna be culturally sensitive to the non-Asians here as we learn to work with more diversity. Anyone? One question. Okay, over here. 
I'm wondering what kinds of things you might see that are uh, maybe specific to biracial kids, because I think that that's a whole uh, different area that's quite difficult also to kind of treat and address. That again, it's a very multi-layered questions, right? That some biracial kids are lucky enough to be raised by both race parents representing both race. But if you're, you're seeing the kid who's biracial, but one of the parents are not in the picture, then the dominance is whoever is providing the care, but then they might visit the other parent's original family. So it's very complicated to address. Now, some biracial family might share some cultural background too, right? Because parents must have, have something in common to get produce the child. But there might be some, some conflicting cultural values. So I really, that's a very good question, but I don't think there is only one answer, but just continue inquiring, continue exploring. Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think it also matters what parental, what parents have uh, as their values, like parental values in terms of how they raise their kids. Yeah. Um, I agree with Yuki that it's complex because there's a lot of factors to take into account. You know, I have a, I have a client who's African American who is adopted by an Asian family. Talk about like different layers, right? And I have, uh, I had a patient who was half South Asian and South, half Chinese. I have a patient who is um, half white, half Asian. It just depends who's raising the child and who spends the most time and whether or not you know they're enculturated by the mom or the dad, depending on who's coming from a different culture versus um, uh, whites. We've also, I've also had patients from, you know, who are uh, Asian and then European, and both parents are immigrants. And so being immigrant sometimes comes with a different um, set of culture because it's not quite um, mainstream American, but they also have that, but you gotta do well in school. And they're not necessarily Asian, but they're from Europe, and they have the same kind of um, value as the immigrant um, parent from Asia. Thank you. Thank you, Yuki. Thank you, Noriel. Really appreciate all the information that you've shared and the insights, and I hope that gives you the courage to move into this complexity rather than to shun it. Thank you. Put your hands together.